Mona Lisa is all about me. It's all about you. It's all about our stories. The stories that never get told, but ought to. Whereby water transportation does not make financial sense, it makes economic sense. I was there for two and a half hours on the floor. Nobody attempted to me. If we don't take care of the poor, the poor will take care of us. It's about getting at the root of things and hearing from the horse's mouth. We have 15 public hospitals to make them affordable. In the whole of Africa, we are bigger. You know, Nigeria, we sleep, eat, dream, fashion. Those with the uh, financial backing don't see fashion as an investment, which makes no sense. If they do it for free, they won't have money for the next case. Mona Lisa is about real life and real lives, yours and mine. Make a date with Mona Lisa and together let's ensure that the important stories get told. Have you heard the expression, you can't see the wood for the trees? This comes to mind when I think of how busy we are, hustling for our daily bread that we forget to savour life. Today, we'll be seeking to change that by turning attention to a topic that should be dear to all our hearts, since it is the heart of how we connect with and assimilate life. Today is devoted to visual arts and human development. Still don't see the connection? Stay with me whilst I take you on a voyage of discovery. The vital role of arts and the artist is the ability to consciously bring about an internal change within us, as well as to communicate the truth to people across cultures and time periods. Nigeria has an artistic tradition that dates back thousands of years. Much of the country's early art had a religious or spiritual significance. Many of the traditional arts and crafts evolved over time to include practical and decorative items. Archaeologists in Nigeria have found a tradition of sculpture that dates to at least 500 BC, including statues and figurines made of ceramic, bronze, terracotta, and brass. The question is, what are we doing to enshrine and invest in human development through art today? Visual arts in Nigeria exhibits the culture of the people, and experts say it may share certain economic resemblances with the Nigerian crude oil. Madame Nika Davids Ogundaye is the curator of Nika Arts Gallery, an arts gallery in Lagos, which is arguably the largest of its kind in West Africa. Housed in a five-story building, the gallery boasts of a collection of about 8,000 diverse artworks. If Nigeria can really focus on the visual art, it will change all the bad image they are giving to Nigeria overseas because art is also part of treasure that Nigeria have all this creativity in their hand. Art is life, so they have life in their hand. So we should focus on art. Art is like oil. You can take it to South Africa and sell. You can roll it and take it to US and sell. Art is like ambassador to the country. Kenyatta Tony knows. He speaks about the immense value visual arts can add to Nigeria, especially with regards to preserving our cultural heritage as a people. Actually, I've been in the sculpting business for long because as a child, I started sculpting as a child. Currently, I'm working with sand and cement together with iron but materials vary according to what you want. Plenty of people show interest in sculpture. Beginning from you, you can light something here and you can take it. Then we get hotels. Hotels like our sculptures, restaurants. I think they fall in the same category. Then schools. Actually, the price is not so high. But when you come, we can talk about it. Renowned Muriel Penta of the Falomo Bridge in Lagos, Polly Alakaja, is a UK-born artist married to a Nigerian. I used to work with an architectural company, James Gilbert Architects, up in Marble House there. And from my office, I used to look down on the space. And so I just kept it in my mind, if I could do something with this space, what would I want to do with it to make it work better for the local community? And then the Chibok girls were kidnapped. Um, 
and immediately this space became associated with the Bring Back Our Girls movement. I felt they needed remembering in a slightly more respectful way and a deeper way. I, th I think the whole story is so incredibly disturbing that I felt it needed more gravitas. But also, I didn't just want to, however, just concentrate on the Chibok girls. I wanted to really use the space as a sort of acknowledgement of the silent suffering of many women. Um, and I think also you need to embrace the new and the now. Um, and I think if you look at what's going on in our youth sort of space, in terms of entertainment and music, the movie industry, we have a very, very rich, diverse and interesting space there. I just wish I could see more culture deeply embedded in everything we're doing, um, which is why putting it in public space, making sure we get it into the schools. But how far would a normal Nigerian go for the love of visual arts? It's good, it's good. And it's a very, I can say it's a very good uh, structure, because you can see these ones here. It makes this place to look fine. Why I would like to invest in visual art? Because it keeps memory. There are some memory whereby the up generation, the upcoming generation, they have not seen. But with visual art, to be able to tell them more about it, and also they will be able to have a more incentive of what is going on. First of all, I, I should say that I love nature. Um, every anything, you know, that you know speaks to what God has created, and it's you know very natural form. You know, I've always passed by here and I saw, used to see the giraffes there and I'm like, where can I find somebody in Lagos who can make this for me? But when I came back and I saw the, these animals, they're different from the regular lions and all of that, I thought for someone, it takes someone who really appreciates it and who's good to go the extra mile to make something like this. Emekamba is an art lover and public commentator. He feels that the gold in the visual arts sector of Nigeria hasn't been harnessed of all its amazing potential. My relationship with the visual arts started many, many years ago. I think it's part of my my early childhood development, being, you know, what you can what people can call now a barack boy. More serious note, I think that for me is is I think art is beauty. And I find that the people that I'm more attuned with are people who have that same sense of appreciation of liking art, paintings, going to parks, seeing statues and opening their mouth and we're like, wow, this is beautiful. Or seeing a beautifully designed house or seeing someone wearing a lovely dress. It's just, it's, it helps and it, you'll find in those people are people who have empathy. So it's simplistic to say that I think we lost our way when we lost appreciation and eye for the arts. I think there were many reasons, the many things that drove us off the cliff, so to speak. You had colonial rule, for example. I think that we, we will not find our way back to modern civilization, modern African civilization, unless we, we have a, a, a concerted systemic program in which young people uh, begin to appreciate art, um, in a, especially African arts, um, not, not from a sense of fear, not from a sense of compulsion, but from a sense of genuine passion and love. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. Are we beginning to smell the roses yet? As we continue to explore the garden of life and its possibilities, we are set to ask some questions of our next guests. Chivnike Okundai is a visual artist who also works with tie and dye. She has four art centers here in Nigeria, and of course, those centers train younger artists. She has one of the largest art gallery in West Africa as well. Please welcome Chief Mrs. Nike Okundai. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> um, you had an Aubrey Gain steeped in um, arts and culture, surrounded by music, surrounded by crafts. Tell us about it. Yes, my parents are craft people, and I was born into it the way they pass education to kids in those days. The, you teach your child what you do. And that is how I learned mm. the music from my father. Mm -hmm. And then my father also is a craft person who used beads to make the crown mm. of the king. Mm. He worked for the king all his life. Mm. Wow. So the way they pass knowledge yes. of 
art to kid in those days. That is how mm. the art is passed on to me at a younger age. Mm. So to what extent has this influenced you in becoming who you are today? Well, actually the inborn art actually helped me a lot because this is something you cannot buy with money. Yeah. And then when I have no money to go to school, so I said, let me focus on what I know how to do and do it properly. The visual art is the contemporary one mm -hmm. that we actually imagine mm -hmm. that come from your own head mm -hmm. or something you see and you want to put it in a nice way so people can read the art and also say, oh, what is this woman thinking by doing this? So those are the visual art. Mm -hmm. But the old one, which is past on from one generation to another mm -hmm. generation is the traditional pattern mm -hmm. of communication, mm -hmm. which is the pattern mm -hmm. of adire, mm -hmm. which we call Thai and Dai. Mm. Adi, Ad are, mm. adire. adire. And that adire is done in different parts of Nigeria. Cross rivers teach their own, Benue teach their own, Jaws, Kanu, Thai, Abe Okuta, Stensu, Ibadan and Oshobo, Lagos, they do hand painting. Mm. Mm. So it's still the art of communication, mm. which is called uh, the red. Tell us, what about the challenges? Tell us about some of the challenges you face owning this huge, beautiful place. Well, the challenges, first of all, is they don't want to borrow female money. Because what do you they, mean? Yeah, the people, when you go to the bank and you say you want to borrow money, they will say, ah, do you have a man who can stand in for you? Then you said, no, I have my work. Or if you have a collector. So it takes me a while. It takes me 10 years. We have to even go to Obasanjo and tell him, we need money. He now say, I will invite the bank for you before they start borrowing wow. us money, the small scale, before mm. they start borrowing us money. Mm. So it takes us a while as mm. a female. You know it's always a struggle, yes, a struggle for, us. for yeah. a female to be able to get up there. Yeah. So getting funding is one. Yes. What about the other internal ones? Oh, the NEPA. Hmm, the NEPA is chopping all our, because we are just on generator here. We don't have electricity. And all the money we make goes, goes into Goes to buying the diesel. diesel. Yes. Up to now, there is no electricity here. Because the NEPA will give you light for three days in a week. And then the bill comes 1.2 million. Then when you just buy your diesel, you are paying 60,000 a day. So you know you Have are- Have you extended this uh, complaint to the, um, to the government? Or? Yeah, I even went to see the NEPA office recently and said they should help me. They should help me. I want all Nigeria to be able to come and see the creativity of their own country is, with electricity instead of them yes, using touch lights. Touch lights. So they said they will see what they can they do. They can do about it. Yeah. And then the, each one of the art that is here is done by Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then we are the custodian. We only keep it for them. When they need it, they come and collect it back. But once in a while, they, mm. we get to sell some for them. And then when we sell for them, they give us 10%. Hmm. Then we also give 5% to the government. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's for people to come and see and enjoy the creativity of their country. That is why we are not charging people to come. You talked about a president that was here some time. I didn't want to go back to his country. <laughs> so tell us about that, that in brief, that okay. experience. The king of Morocco come to sign the fertilizer in Abuja, and he saw us on TripAdvisor. And he told the people, oh, if you can help me to get to that naked gallery, I will give you a credit. So from UK, they were looking for how somebody who knows us. The king gets here around 8 o'clock in the night. They said, August visitor is coming. We don't know he's the king of Morocco. This man did not live here until 11. After that, the second day he come back. He want to spend three days. He ended up spending three and a half weeks. Fantastic. He just oh, wow. said he, did he, buy, did he, buy he bought so much, so many I sent him to seven galleries. Wow. Then the market. And then he said, I don't want people to know I'm the king of Morocco. I now tell them, don't let people know he's the king of Morocco. The second day, they put a flag. King of Morocco, welcome. He was just buying everything. 
Three thank you so much, King of Morocco. <laughs> if you're yeah. watching this wherever you are in any part of the world for supporting the <laughs> artwork in Nigeria. Of course, coming to Mama Okundaya's mm -hmm. art gallery to support her. Thank you so much, wherever you are. <laughs> um, so what developments would you like to see going forward in our visual arts in industry? Well, I want to also thank you people, the media, who is helping us to broadcast and show the people what we have here. So people can come. We want to see more young people. Because our own, we need you people to carry on by showcasing the creativity of your own country That's in a right. nice way. Mm -hmm. They only see the bad part of Nigeria. They don't see the treasure, which is the art. So by you people showcasing it, showing it to the world, mm -hmm. then more and more people will be aware Mm -hmm. And you are creating more awareness for the youth. Lastly, when you hear about the debate about uh, some of our bronze, um, you know how to bring back our bronze works, etc., etc., from the you know from the British Museum. Museum. Yes. So how does that make you feel? Has there been any move towards achieving that particular movement? Well, I think the youth over there they want the work back to Nigeria, but Nigeria also has to create a contemporary museum that they will receive this at And we don't have it yet. We don't have it yet. I imagine we've succeeded in slowing you down to consider the finer things of life. Let's continue at this pace as we join our next guest on our special segment, The Journey. Yadi Chinma Okoha Kalo is a visual artist who works with various artistic media, from film to sculpting to photography to painting. At the age of 20, Yadi had her exhibition in Lagos called Woman in Bloom. She had her shows in Cape Town, South Africa in 2017, and other exhibitions in Paris and Miami. She identifies curiosity as a motivating force behind her work, and as such could be described as a futuristic artist. Welcome to the show, Yadi. Thank you. So tell, tell me, where, where, how did this all begin for you? I mean, from what I've gathered about you, you said what informs, you know, your creativity is your ability to stay, mm -hmm. um, question, you know, you want to ask questions, yes. you want to be curious, you're, yes. you know, what, what, what why? why, why all of that? Uh, so I was, I was speaking to a friend yesterday and I was mm -hmm. telling him that uh, I love enjoyment, you know, plain and simple. I really like to play. And I think that for me, what art has given me is, I guess, more avenues to kind of express and like test, I want to say the limits of my enjoyment, but mm. like, you know, and it mm. really is about me being curious about my environment, mm -hmm. being curious about my relationships with people, mm -hmm. being curious about the things that I'm surrounded by, um, and finding ways to properly express that. Mm. Um, art has given me painting, it's given mm. me sculpting, and, photography and mm. film. What fascinates you about painting, artwork generally? Do you think mm. it's um, lucrative? Is uh, it a lucrative business? So I mean, I, I don't think that I'm motivated by something being lucrative or not. I think that with, with the work that I'm pursuing, it's more about, you know, do you feel comfortable with this? Mm -hmm. And how does this make you, or rather, how does this help you answer questions, like mm -hmm. really pertinent questions mm -hmm. that I have in the world? And, you know, is that, going to give you like as much joy as possible. Is it giving you joy? It, it is giving me a lot of joy. So right now you're um, not making money out of your craft? I'm making money out of my That's craft. That's the whole idea. Come on. <laughs> Would you have a craft and you're not making money? No, no, no of course. How do you it's pay not, your bills? I, it's, it's, it's definitely, I'm definitely making money, but it's not my start point with how I, like, I guess, get into the work. Um, so if you weren't an artist, what would mm. you have? What would you have? Been. That's that one's a really difficult question. No, you have to answer it. But actually, it's really difficult. I feel like <laughs> it's so. So for me, I guess being an artist is less about say, oh, this is this person that wakes up at this point in the morning or in the afternoon and paints only. For me, it's about like truly, truly following what it is that I innately feel mm. and like desire. Mm. And I think I would always have followed that. And goodness knows what other journey or pathway that led me to. But for now, it's like expressing itself. In, and your parents? In my parents, um, well, my mom's been very, very supportive. And your dad? Um, your dad also, probably also, also, wondering. <laughs> <laughs> also, also supportive in his own way. Um, but I mean, they had their own, I guess, 
ideas of what it is that they wanted their first daughter to be. And you're the right? first daughter. I didn't even ask daughter. you that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. awesome. um, you know, you get the whole Ada Welcome. Thing. Welcome to the course. club of Ada's. <laughs> and of course, they're supposed to be, uh -huh. you know, all these rules and guidelines that you yes, follow. But, yes, um, you have to be a doctor or yes, be a lawyer or yes. some sort of yes. diplomat. But luckily, life happened in very, in very trying and testing ways. And not Tell me. to... Hmm, I mean, it's for, for me. I think there were there were a lot of failures that came in the conventional academia, where I wasn't able to say, I just wasn't able to live up to the general expectations of like this is what a successful student is in that line of field. I, I got to a point where there's the question of oh, you know, who who am I? Am I smart enough? Am I brilliant mm -hmm. enough? And then I find something like art and creativity, and I find that I have diligence in that work. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm up in the night, lighting mm -hmm. a candle, trying to draw, mm -hmm. with, regardless of you know what limits it is that I'm experiencing. And that really gave me the opportunity to validate that there is like you know hard work that goes into there. For me, a major truth would be that I'm the only person who can kind of validate my own experience. Um, I can't really depend on extra conversation that comes from like anybody mm. because everybody has varied ways of being and you move from say you move from Nigeria you go to somewhere like Ghana the expectations of what success is are so different the expectations of what you know someone's meant to do is so different and in I guess my own bit of being like as dynamic as I hope to be I have to become the one true voice that really like you know says yeah yeah you're okay you're mm -hmm. fine Mm -hmm. um, do more or don't. Mm -hmm. Rest. Mm -hmm. Work. Mm -hmm. I was just complaining that I know too many lawyers. I know too many lawyers who are not practicing. You know, they've gone into other diverse Other's, fields. Yeah. So like if mm -hmm. well, everybody's like going into the creative field. If they're mm -hmm. not photographing, then they're filmmaking. Um, I think for people out there, it's just really about following what it is that you truly, truly, truly want to do. Because there will be difficulty, and mm -hmm. this is not the kind of country that like has the, you know, I guess a an abundance of infrastructure that's set up to just hold you um, when it is that you fall. I think mm. you should expect the difficulty. You should expect that whatever it is that you put yourself into is for the long term. Long term. Like really, really think that it's for the long term. So a word of encouragement yes. to to people who, I know the young people want to uh, love this conversation, so a yeah. word to them to encourage them if you are an artist and you're finding mm. it difficult to break in and break, break forth into yeah. the, you know, you know, into in the the their craft and yeah. in the industry. Tell, tell them, give so them a word of encouragement. I, I think, you know, I said before, just think of it as long term. Think of it as work that you are at the start of. There isn't really anything that backs you up. Um, and you really have to be willing to commit yourself. Uh, on a more personal level, I think just stay as honest as possible. Mm -hmm. Stay questioning and I think the world is moving so quickly and so <coughs> fast. There's the internet, there's social media, there's you know AI technology. You need to be, I guess you need to put priority on being as diverse as possible um, and as changing as possible. Just go with the flow and move and move. And well done, I'm, Yedi Chinma, yes. right? Yes, right? Did yes, I get that? <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming on the journey to share your thoughts. And Thank I mean, you. you're so, this for is quite me. insightful. We asked at the start of this edition, what is the connection between our visual arts and our development as individuals and as a nation? Although the connection may have seemed tenuous at the start of the program, I hope that as we have explored, the value of our visual arts sector has become more and more apparent to you as it has become to me. We doubtless have a rich visual art inheritance as Chief Mrs. Nike Okundae is at pains to preserve and parade for all the world to appreciate. Thanks to tireless advocates like Chief Nike, we have a rich depository of our prolific collection that are ever increasing. Visual arts are not just beauty for beauty's sake. One of our visual artists, Indideka, Akunyili has proved that there is plenty of money in the arts. Her painting called Bush Babies, sold for a record-breaking price of nearly $3.4 million at a Los Angeles auction house. 
Visual arts is also the language of our tourism industry in that it is a window into our humanity and the things we value and want to preserve. However, Polly Alakija, a Nigerian-British artist and painter of the famous Falomor Morales, is clear that our, our heritage and expression of the visual arts is not a past event to be preserved, but an ever-evolving expression to be explored. With young, exploratory, and even futuristic artists like Yadi Chima on the scene, it's clear that there is much more to come. So... Coming full circle at this edition draws to a close. I am left with the unshakable impression that visual arts is a natural expression of our soul, breathed out of the opportunity to reflect and appreciate the natural beauty that surrounds us. By expressing ourselves through visual arts and teaching our children to do likewise, we are both cultivating a more empathic society where we are more sensitive to the value of life and its boundless beauty. Essentially, we are making the world a better place from the inside out. Till next time when we are set to take you on another adventure of discovery to who knows where, let's continue to nurture an attitude of gratitude. Life, they say, is what you make of it. Mm -hmm.